So welcome to our review of the new uh, Stealth 2 product. Uh, so literally just got these in, um, looking forward to getting them in the fitting bay, but also give you a bit of a rundown of what, uh, with Matt doing the testing today, um, a bit of a rundown of what the tech is, what the changes are, and uh, what we're gonna see from a performance point of view. We are gonna split this into three videos. We've got to kind of do the drivers in one, Ferries in another and the hybrids and the iron launches in the third one. And there will be a link on the screen and in the description at the end of the video. So you can find those links uh, at the back end of this one. So ultimately, yeah, it's still red. Yeah. Um, you know, key thing, <coughs> that was one of the things that split opinion a bit last time around. Um, but yeah, what are the, I guess ultimately, what are the key changes across the driver ranges? So you still got the carbon face. Yeah, yeah, nothing's changed there. You still get that. That bright red face. Yeah, and that's something Love that... Love it or hate it. That, yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's been a long time in development. Um, and, and ultimately it is... I think the one key thing that Taylor Maid would say as well, but the, to note is that this is not a driver or a series of development on product that they're expecting someone who bought Stealth last year to upgrade this year. This is really... The product developments are really aimed at... Uh, yeah, I mean, I've got an M4. It's that kind of generation, three, four generations back to see a tangible, tangible yeah. game. So what's changed with the, uh, with the face? So it's a 60X carbon twist face. Uh, ultimately, very, very small changes in the way they've uh, used the inverted cone tech, uh, maximizing ball speed across the face. Um, bit of forgiveness, but they've taken, it's 24 grams now, it's two grams lighter than last time around. So marginal, but marginal. Any, yep. any little helps, right? A uh, little bit of weight saving. <clears throat> uh, and I think that, uh, I think you'd say as well is, is really the weight savings the real key across all the different. Yeah, I mean, you look across everything they've done with it this year. It's 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 all a couple of grams here and there saved, but every mm. little bit being yeah. a bit more carbon, every little bit just mm. seems to make a a bit more of a difference. Yeah, yeah, and it's a, it's 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 a three or four small changes. So you've got you've got the face. It's the same kind of layering. It's still still a you know, heavy amount of layering on the composite. Similar kind of thick, come slightly thinner, a little bit of weight saving there. What is noticeable um, is that, that band around the back. Um, so what we'll see here, I'll bring this in closer, uh, call it the, uh, it's the carbon reinforced composite ring, which is this around the back here, which forms basically the, the frame of the head. So very, very lightweight, very, very strong. Uh, again, saving weight from a, a, a metal frame. Uh, any weight saving is really just about redistributing it. They're not trying to make the heads lighter. Um, this is really about saving weight in certain areas of the head and putting it in a, in a different position. So yeah, we've got light composite sole here, light composite crown on the top as well, uh, more of a, a gloss finish than the matte finish on the previous model. Um, and across the whole range, that's really you're saving three, four, five, six grams here or there to put more at the back. This is really development on forgiveness versus, you know, they'll always look at speed, but it's developing forgiveness. The only thing I will say about the plus model is you don't get the, the red section of the carbon reinforced. Mm. You still get the, the carbon reinforced composite ring on it, but you mm. just don't get that red mark across the, the back edge when it's then kind of set down behind the ball. You don't, you don't see that red edge that you get on yeah, the Yeah, so we can hold them up. You'll, you'll see between the two. On the plus, it finishes just below the rim there. So on the HD in the, for a better, very standard model, that red rim around the back is visible, which isn't on the plus. And, and really that's <coughs> gonna be about appealing to certain players' eyes. Um, you know, whether it's to do with framing that back edge, creating a visual on alignment, um, there's, there, you could read two or three different things into the visual, visual changes on those heads, but ultimately the player playing the plus head is more likely to want the more traditional look uh, and not to see anything extraneous on the club head. So other changes, slight development on the, um, on the twist face, um, in that inverted cone tech and the twist face really about keeping ball speed up and dispersion as good as possible across the face. Uh, again, these are all, either all things that TaylorMade have done in the past, so there's nothing revolutionary on this head. It's, it's incremental, on, yeah. incremental development on what's been done before. Um, still got on each of the models, the, the through slot as on previous tailor-made models. We'll see that across every single part of their, their line, driver fairway hybrid irons. That's something that's been part of their identity for a long time. So that bit of flexibility, bit of ball speed, ball speed low on the face. That's really what that aids. Uh, it's about getting a little bit of extra flexion, a little extra ball speed. Um, and then the only other change is really is in, in that back weight. By saving weight everywhere else, there's a little bit more weight at the back. On the Plus Series, you've got a 15 gram weight. 
on the standard the Core Series 25 grams and on the HD 30 grams at the back. So everything's moving weight further and further back to gain as much forgiveness as possible. Um, so what we're going to do now is going to, Matt's going to hit a few shots. We're going to run through them from a data point of view. Uh, obviously each different series has slightly different standard shaft offerings dependent, dependent on the launch profile they're looking for, but they're available a, a, across each of the models if you're looking to, to use, for example, a, a lighter, higher launch shaft in the Plus, that's still possible to do. Um, but really this is, we'll focus more on the head tech initially for this. So I'm going to start off with the Plus. So this is the the head designed at the, the higher speed, higher launch player, looking to get spin down as much as possible. Oh. I have to say, the changes to the front edge with the slight matte finish to that leading mm. edge plus the, the black on the back edge, you don't actually notice the red face as much this year. Got it, yeah. Looking down at it, just kind of initially here, I don't notice that, that, that red face as much as you did in the initial, mm. kind of the, the first generation stuff. So retain, because it's got the composite face, it retains the same kind of sound and note totally. off the face. Um, still quite, it's quite a lively sound. I think that was one of the things we were pleasantly surprised with last year was, was the, the sound was quite a nice one. It wasn't dull like a lot of the, the historical composites have been. Yeah. There's still a little bit of liveliness to it. It's always, people, people always say with the tailor-made stuff where it's got the carbon in the way they've done the carbon, mm. you know when you're hitting a tailor-made because of yeah. the sound of it. And it's got a very... Uh, standalone sound in in what to expect yeah it's a very you know both a little bit but very very stable as you'd expect from this model very very stable on spin yeah obviously done a few shots earlier on once you get that face squaring up that spin your comment earlier was that's a really low that that is a very low spin head. yeah there was one or two where it was drawing over and it was like 16 1700 yeah. spin which for me i'm normally a 2000, 2100, yeah. just purely because of speed, it's going to be mm. around that 2000 number. So seeing something that low for me is, is, is quite impressive and it mm. kind of gets you a little excited as a fitter when you think about the fact you get guys with a lot of speed who create spin. Yeah. You look at this and go, well, this could optimize them, optimize them out really nicely. So. And in terms of line on the head, and we'll get into some of this a bit more with the other, other heads, the, um, because of the nature of the red face, it kind of highlights where that where that, that face orientation, the shaping makes it yeah. look. Um, is that something, is there any kind of, you seeing any notable change on that in terms of setup? Does it look a little flatter, for example? This, this one looks pretty, <clears throat> I guess we'd call pretty traditional in, mm. in a, kind of a traditional players looking driver. So yeah. maybe a touch flat versus mm. a, something else you might see in a, in a standard, more forgiving setup, um, but not, not kind of drastic one way or the other. Yeah, and so th there's that one that the face was squared off a little bit more. I don't know whether James can bring up the data there, but you know, the, the previous shots were sort of you know, very stable, so 2425 on spin. That one's just squared in a little bit more and, and, and set at, at mat, mat speed um, to, to get the spin there um, without having to go crazy low in loft. Yeah, I think yeah that's, that's the still other thing nine. to say on this. This is just a nine degree in its standard position, and you'd, in one of the other heads, in your kind of gamer head, it's a, a Seven and, and a half. Seven and a half minimum loft as possible. <coughs> yeah, yeah. That looks quite an impressive element to this head and that it really looks to be controlling spin very well, but actually with a more open face, also stopping it from flaring up too much. Yeah, that's the thing. At no point with any of those three did I actually square the face up. Mm. And normally when you see that, for me, that easily gets to 2800 yeah. without me trying a whole, yeah. a whole lot. That spin number really kicks up. And mm. the fact that none of those three got above 25 was, you know, 2,500 yeah. was a really good, for me, it's a really good thing to see yeah. from a, both a fitter perspective and actually yeah. for myself for <laughs> thinking That's about next year, <laughs> for, for this year over. coming. We'll so. can see the chat about that we switch heads over. I think that was probably, just relating it back to what we saw with Stealth last year. It was very good for ball speed consistency across the face, but get it a little bit off and the spin got yeah, a little it, bit up and down. It wasn't necessarily the most forgiving player's head on, mm. on the planet, but, you know, it's always that, always that trade-off you're looking for between, um, between a player's head and a, you know, a, low, a low spin head and, and forgiving. It's how, yeah. do you, how do you blend the two? And probably a, a real good sign to see that actually they, it looks like they're starting to hit the nail on the head with this. We saw it a little bit last year with 
with one or two of the others, but mm. it looks like Taylor made have joined the party for low spin and forgiving. Yeah, because I think you know, last year one of the you know, the Callaways was very consistent for spin, but not quite as good on ball speed yeah. uh, that we found. Um, the Taylor was very good on ball speed, but a bit of a miss. The spin started to get up and down a little bit. Um, so it certainly appears, now granted we'll, we'll know more and more as we see more and more people in and start to use it with different swing styles and things, but um, on initial look, the spin consistency looks like it really kind of holds that spin from flaring too much. Yeah, yeah it seems to really control it. Right, looking at the standard model, mm. just straight away, looks more upright. Yeah. And I, this is a 10 and a half head, okay, it's set at nine and a half, but I can see a lot more of the face. Mm. That red ring on the back is very noticeable. Yeah. It looks a very different driver to the Plus. Yeah, and I think to, to go into that a little bit, you get, I'll bring these close to the push, so you get slightly different lines that the brands do around that toe line. So it looks very, very minimal from face on, but actually when, you, when you're looking at the club from that orientation, how, depending how visible this is, how that, that, that toe is graduated off, that can, and, and the line around the toe, that can really affect how the face looks. So the deeper that part of the face there, the more you're going to see, the more closed it can look. So that's why I was alluding to with Matt there is that you know, into this model, what they're doing is there's potentially a little bit more upright, brings the toe up a bit more, which makes it look a little more closed. And yeah, granted more upright makes it easier to square in as well, but is visually probably going to look slightly friendlier for a lot of golfers. Yeah. To me, and especially kind of looking down at it here from a kind of a top down, you look at the the base head design and it looks a little bit sim 2 like it looks like yep. they've taken some of the technology with the with the disc weight at the front it looks very much if you were to kind of take the raw design of a sim 2 yep. on the on the base plate it would be very similar it's just obviously with the carbon with the extra weight setting yep. it's just taken it to that next level and to reiterate what we were saying earlier, not, not a great surprise. I mean, the fact that they've taken, you know, Stealth that was very successful. Sim you know, 2 Sim that was, two was really a good. Really good head. You know, there are elements, you can see they're kind of blending elements of both, which one would hope a brand would do over the models as they progress them. So one thing, even though construction's slightly different, the sound's very, very similar. Yes. Um, so that's one of the things from a fitting point of view, we use sound quite a lot to determine. We can tell where strike is. We can tell um, you know, how, it's almost how fast the ball sounds off the face, but between the two, very, very, very similar acoustics. Probably slight, I mean, there weren't, weren't big differences last with the previous model, but uh, sounds not, a, still sounds a little bit livelier, a little bit yeah, more Yeah, I mean, when you got to the, the HD in the stealth, it got a little soft off the face. When you yeah. got someone who was, carrying a decent amount of speed you get mm. the odd one that sounded a little dull mm. but ultimately that was a few and far between because you didn't tend to find a use for it too much for someone yeah. with a lot of speed yeah so for me as a head shape i'm really battling this to mm. to kind of control know where i can go with the the arms and the hands because to me, with the slightly more upright look, it just looks like it's going to go left. Yeah, I was going to say, is that how you, you battle that, yeah. that kind of... Yeah, I set it down, and to me, it just looks like, like it it's pointing over, yeah. over there. And I, you know, I know that's ultimately the design of the head, is to try and aid more golfers to, mm. to square it up. So, you know, you take your, your average golfer, they put it down, they think they've got, probably got a world of confidence that they're not yeah, going to yeah. slice it. Yeah. You know, I mean, what's so actually interesting, those couple of shots is, you know, yes, spins, I'll go back to the previous one, maybe a hair bit of struck turned over a little more, but you know, we are seeing a ball speed, you know, retention is still pretty similar, but it's, you know, spins up three, Launches four, up, spins three up. 400 revs. Yeah. Um, so you know, enough to make, I think that was one of our comments um, earlier on was that, that, you know, that there's a little bit more separation of the two heads in terms of flight performance. Um, you know, it, it's sometimes, you, know, you, you can get too low a spin. So actually having a little bit of ball flight can help can help actually kind of categorize the heads and make, make you know which one's better for a certain swing style and, and ultimately fit them better because it's a bit more definite. That's, that's ultimately where the Callaway was very good last year was, okay, ball speed was a little down versus the others across mm. the board, but you had clear and obvious, mm. Max LS was the lowest, then triple diamond. It was, it was clear and obvious what yeah. did what role. So to go from, you know, to see TaylorMade now falling into that bracket of you can clearly see the difference. Mm. It's just another and, and another benefit from them as a successor, you know, to show how successful this driver could potentially be for yeah. them. Now that sounded more squared up. 
Yeah, so yeah, very, very square in terms of setup. So for you at this speed, this is not really where, basically where <laughs> this driver's aimed at. Yeah. So what we're going to see for Matt at his extreme level is that the plus is going to produce a little bit better ball speed for you. But what we are seeing, and pretty consistent spin, you know, that one's squared off better, 2,500 versus 2.1. Obviously, it's a slightly higher loft, so but so he picked up about a degree and a bit on launch. Um, but to get that bit of progression in terms of spin profile is definitely, definitely reassuring to see. Uh, and then to feel wise to hit, the notably not too, stand out. Not too dissimilar. It's a little softer off the face. Mm. It doesn't feel like it's got quite as much punch to it. But that's that, that's that weight back. Uh, yeah, that's the, yeah, you that's the thing. Forward, you put, you put more guts. You put an extra, what, 10 grams in the back mm. plus lighter weight in the front, it's, yeah. it's always going to feel a little softer, mm. but it is, it is noticeable as to the softer feel off the face yeah. versus, the, versus the plus model. Yeah, and we'll pop the, pop the HD on as the final one in this, this uh, category. But, you know, I, I set that down and I look at it and I think about the, the guys we tend to see coming through and the, the guys I see in the bay. Mm. That driver that sits, uh, the standard stealth two that sits a little more upright, looks like it favours a little bit more of that left-hand side to the average guy that's th three across it, one down mm. with the driver. It could be the, the one that really cures the, the miss right without being a big high draw driver that makes yeah. you think you're going you're gonna to hook it, mm. <laughs> which is where potentially this one falls in. Yeah, in, so in the, the HD, HD is, is yeah, the, I mean, it's con construction wise versus stealth to there's, there's more weight coming into the heel side. Grab that standard um, one. Yeah, so they're putting a little more, more weight into the heel side. Now, the, the one time you move more weight into the heel, historically, you know, you're losing a bit of forgiveness, potentially losing a little, you know, you'll gain a little bit of spin, losing a bit of forgiveness has always been the compromise. So, again, by saving weight elsewhere, they can retain. The principle is they can retain as much weight in an optimum position for forgiveness and keep some of that weight moved into the heel. Which is ultimately why it's heavier weight in the back again. Yeah. To keep that weight in the, to keep the, the, the center of mass in the right place. Um, again, putting it down, more upright again. Mm -hmm. yeah. Clearly more upright, more left in it. Again, that's all just soul shape. But yeah. to me stood here, I feel like I've got to be more almost Bryson-like yeah, to yeah. get the, the body in the right place, um, to get this thing kind of flat to the deck. But let's see, let's see in performance if actually it's just me being um, hmm. difficult. Yeah, so now that clearly, sound. to me, felt like it released much quicker. Yeah, a couple of degrees more turnover. So the previous shot was squared off. Um, so actually, as you, because it's got the toe squared in, you've got a demonstrably different ball flight. But actually, because it has squared in, the spin stayed in the same place as the last shot with the Stealth 2. Now, yeah. I think you know, square it off, we'll, we'll see, see spin up a little bit more, um, which again is one of the, the I'm not, I don't use like the word compromise, but it's one of the compromises between the models is you've got the option of you know, lofting up or closing in the face on the Stealth 2 if you're really trying to keep spin down. But if you're really trying to square it off, then you can potentially forgo a little bit of spin for the fact that it's going to help Get it, get it moving away from the right-hand side a little bit more. This thing is a yeah, drawing so, machine. Yeah, it, yeah, so it does, <laughs> does, does what it says on the tin. So similar kind of, similar kind of launch stealth too, but, but actually for those, because, you, because you've got the toe coming into it, has come through a bit more, which shuts the face down a little bit more from a um, from a flight and flight wise ten, t has taken this has brought the spin back down in line with the stealth two, which um, so one of the shots earlier we were seeing more of a kind of a two seven two eight on spin. So um, I think for a squared off one, if you take square square for every single club, you're going to get about a three to four hundred rep progression head to head. But um, what what but get I it squared of, in the spin in the same place? Yeah, what I like to see there is, you know, for me. Again, this is me just kind of going down the, if it was me putting this golf club in the bag mm. for a certain golfer, you get a 12 degree head yeah. in the HD, loft it down to 10 so it sits less looking left. Yeah. Actually from that you can see it retains a mm. good spin number yeah. and you can aid someone to create a draw shape without it overhooking yeah. and well, keep spin down. Without it looking to... to without it looking well. like it's yeah. going over there. <laughs> yeah. So actually they've now got three clearly different mm drivers 
that all do a clearly different job that actually, when set up in certain ways, could all do the same job for someone. Yeah, so you've got, a, got a room for overlapping yeah. and room for... Depending yeah. on what the person needs from a fitting perspective for yeah. us as a, what do they need to hit the most consistent job. Yeah. And visually, what can help them feel comfortable set up over it as well. Yeah. yeah. So, so ultimately, you know, you've got small progressions across each, each head. Um, I think what we're going to see is a more clarity between the models, which is always a good thing. Um, but you know, utilising, developing on technologies, um, keeping the, uh, the, the visuals that have actually been very strong from this year, keeps the identity of the brand. But uh, you know, maybe sort of drawing on some older models, developing those, bring, you know, merging technologies together um, with the weight positioning, but just now the ability going lighter in certain parts of the head to position that weight in a little bit more of it in a more optimal position. So I hope, uh, hope you've enjoyed the... The driver set up, we're going to be going on to doing the fairway wood and the hybrid tests shortly, so there'll be a link to that in the video now. But, um, feel free to you know, subscribe, like and hit the, uh, hit the bell button and we'll look forward to seeing you in the next videos.